This morning we're going to be talking about being the vessel. You know, God is wanting to use us uh, for His will in our lives, and God is wanting to use us for, for, for the advancement of the kingdom, and God is wanting to use us to be better, uh, to bring other people to the kingdom of God. But folks, we got to learn how to be a vessel, and we got to learn how to surrender ourselves to God. we got to learn how to give it all away. we got to learn how to be totally and 100% surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning we're going to be talking about being the vessel, and you'll turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of Second. In chapter four, mm -hmm. we're gonna be reading verses one through yeah. six this wow. morning. Y'all just stay with me because the Lord started speaking to me during that worship, yeah, and uh, we'll He switched me around a little bit, and He started leading me another yeah. way. And, I might preach three different services up here this morning. Praise God. I ain't no telling what's going to go down. But I'll tell you what. God's going to get all the glory. And I'm going to tell you what. It all belongs to Him. It don't have nothing to do with me. It all belongs to Him this morning. Amen. Amen. Now there cried a certain woman. Verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant my husband is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come and take unto him my two sons to be bonded. And Elisha said, and Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me what hast thou in thy in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, in, even empty vessels, and borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Yeah. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. So as long as there was vessels coming in, the oil kept flowing. But once the vessels run out, the oil stayed. It said that the oil stopped. See, this is a famous Old Testament story that you might not understand what it has to do with your life today. But it definitely intersects with your life today. See, a lot of times we allow the world to fill us with so many problems. We allow the world to fill us with so many hardships. We allow the world to fill us with so many different, different situations in our life that we're so filled up that there's not any room for God in our life. God is looking for an empty vessel this morning. In the Bible days, if you couldn't pay your bills, the creditor could come and enslave the next generation in your household. See, if you would have to pay the bill for the previous generation, and if you couldn't pay the bill for the previous generation, the creditors would come, and they would take your children, and they would use your children as slaves to pay off your debt. See, this tells us that if we allow ourselves to get around, uh, to get covered up in debt from the world system, that someone's always going to be responsible for the debt incurred. It says right here that the, that the, that the, that the, that the widow woman's seed was going to be responsible for the debt that was owed. It said the widow woman's seed was going to be responsible for what they had done in their lifetime. Listen to what I'm saying this morning. See, you're going to be responsible. Your, your children, your seed is going to be responsible for what you're doing today. Your seed is going to be responsible for how you're, uh, uh, how you're treating other people today. Your seed is going to be responsible for your dedication to the Lord today. Whether you've got dedication to the Lord or whether you don't. See, this woman had lost her husband. But it says this, this woman's husband feared the Lord. So he was a godly man. So, so she had no means of income. So the creditors were at her door to enslave the next generation. The creditors was at her door to take her seed. The creditors was at her door to steal her children from her. Listen to what I'm saying. This is a picture of the spirit of the world coming to enslave the next generation. This is a picture of the spirit of the world knocking on our church doors and saying that your sons and daughters are going to be our slaves. This is a picture of the spirit of the world knocking on our doors at home saying I come to get your sons and daughters. I come to take your sons and daughters and I'm going to chain them. I'm going to addict them. I'm going to bind them to everything that will kill, steal, and destroy. So folks, this is why it's so important that we live for Jesus and that 
all the seed we sow is for the betterment of the kingdom of God. See, we need to learn from this story because, see, we're looking at affected generations to come of the seven generations. Your decisions today, how you live in the day, what you're doing today is going to affect your children. It's going to affect your grandchildren. It's going to affect your great-grandchildren. It's going to affect your great-great-grandchildren of the seven generations and so on. Listen to what I'm saying. So if it affects your children, that child is going to be under that curse. So that child is going to act the same way you did. That means that seven more generations after your, after your child is going to be affected. And then that seven more generations after your grandchild is going to be affected. So what we're doing today, the decisions we make in the day, how we act in the day, how we serve the Lord today has everything to do with our, with our seed for the next seven generations. So are you willing to see? Oh, wait, pray God, I shall whoo, pray God. Listen to what I'm saying. See, so Satan is not only after you, but see, but see, he knows if he can get you off track, then he can enslave your family for generations to come. See, if you've not surrendered yourself to God and made a decision to trust him totally, then you have nothing to stop the enemy from destroying your seed. Listen to me. You can stop the enemy from destroying your seed today by the way you live today, by the decisions you make today. In other words, when, you, when, when, when we're not living for God, it allows the enemy to put a curse on your bloodline, and this is referred to as a generational curse. Listen, if you look at the problems that you deal with today, those problems came from the curses in your bloodline. That's because people before you didn't live right for the Lord. That's because people before you allowed a curse to get on that bloodline, and now you're dealing with that curse in your life. And see, if you don't do something to stop the curse in your life, then you don't do something to reverse the curse in your life, guess what? That same curse is going to be handed down to your son or your daughter. The devil's just ain't after you, folks. He's after your seed. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying, praise God. Hallelujah. See, it's up to us today to put a stop to this generational curse. In other words, it's time that we empty ourselves so we can start pouring the blessings of God into our lives and reverse the curse that we've been dealing with our whole life. Listen to what I'm saying this morning, folks. Your child might be in the situation they in because you refuse to live right for the Lord. Your child might be in the situation they in because you refuse to stand up and do what's right for God. But I can tell you right now, if you'll start living for God, and you will fully surrender to God, and you will empty your vessel this morning so God can pour his blessing in your vessel, guess what? That, that same, that same, uh, that, 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 uh, that what he's pouring into your vessel, that blessing is going to be passed. Down to your seed. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, other words, see, the only thing that was stopping the creditors from taking the next generation was the oil. The only thing that was stopping the net of the creditors from taking the next generation or her, her sons, well, or enslaving her sons was the oil. Listen to me. See, the oil, oil in the Bible represents the Holy Spirit. All in the Bible represents the miracle power of God. All in the Bible represents the supernatural intervention of God. See, the widow woman has spent everything she had, but she has some oil in the house. Praise God, listen to what I'm saying. She has some oil in the house. She had oil because she because her husband feared the Lord. Because her husband was a godly man. Because her husband set the course for that family. Listen, men, I'm talking to you this morning, men. It's time for you to set the course for your family this morning. It's time for you to show them how to and you show your family how to live for God this morning. And quit playing these little games. Quit playing these little uh, tricks you want to play on everybody so you can get your own way. Stand up for God. Be a man of God. And teach your wife how to be a woman of God. And then you're going to be passed down to yourself. Right. And when the creditors come to get your seed, see, they ain't going to be able to take it. Why? You got some oil in the house. Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. So you say, in other words, in other words, see, you got to take the time to know God personally, and you, and you got to have some oil in your house when dark times attack your life. You, you got to have some, but see, it's going to be the oil that, has been, that you've been collecting that is going to protect you. It's going to be the oil that you've been collecting that's going to light your path. It's going to be the oil that you've been collecting that's going to cause you to escape the dark attacks that's coming on your life. It's the oil, folks. It's the oil. This woman didn't have nothing to protect her sons. She went to the man of God and said, 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 said I need your help. 
And he said, what is your hobby? Y'all can get ahead of myself, praise God. See, the only thing that can stop the next generation from being a slave, it ain't the church programs. It ain't, it ain't the, the pastor's performance. It ain't the, the musician's performance. It ain't the ministries we got going on. It takes the anointing of the Holy Spirit to stay free in your life. Right. Listen, you've got to have some oil in your house. You've got to have the Holy Spirit actively working in your house. You've got to have the oh, hallelujah. You've got to have the Holy Spirit. You've got to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And that's what protects you from anything hurting your seed. You are your seed. Yes, yes. Listen to me. You can have the biggest church in town. But if there ain't no oil in that church, there ain't no power in that church. Yes, oh, oh, shoot. You can have you, you can have a, a church that supports 50 missions. But if there ain't no oil in that church, there ain't no power in that church. Praise God. I'm going to make this thing live. See, the power is in the oil. It's the oil that keeps your light burning when darkness tries to overtake you. See, I want you to notice that the answer was in the house. It's not out there. It's in here. It ain't, hey, it ain't, it ain't in, the, it, in my brother over here. It's in the house. It ain't in my sister over here. It's in the house. See, it's, it's in, man, in the house it's talking about. It's your physical body. And we have to fill up our tabernacles with the Holy Spirit. See, you can be out of everything. I'm sure. You can be out of everything, but if you've got a small pot of oil, it don't matter what kind of trouble hits your life. You know how to handle that thing. You know how to take on that thing, and you know how to tear that thing apart. You've got to understand, when you've got some oil, praise God, see, there's a Holy Spirit revival going on in your, shut up, I see, in your spirit. There's a Holy Ghost revival going on in this church that's going to shape this state, it's going to shape this city, it's going to shape this world, because we have some oil in this church. Amen. Ah. Listen, see, we're not about the programs. We ain't about the performance. We ain't about the numbers. See, we are about get we about the oil this morning. We are about seeing shoo, praise God. We are about being filled with the Holy Ghost. We are about being seeing lives transformed. We are about seeing people get saved. We are about some people getting set free. Folks, let me give you a news flash this morning. At our mother's house ministries, we got some oil in the house. And as long as we got oil in the house, as long as we keep emptying our vessels every day, as long as we keep surrendering every day, the Bible says that God's going to keep multiplying the oil. Amen. But once your vessel gets full, listen to what I'm saying. I ain't talking about the oil. Once you allow your vessel to get full of the world system, guess what? The oil's going to stop. In other words, there ain't going to be no more oil for the house. And once there ain't no more oil for the house, that means that the devil can come in and tear your life apart. Y'all with me this morning? Amen. Listen, the prophet said to the widow woman, what do you have in your house? That's a huge question. Because I'm going to ask you, what do you have in your house? See, what you have in your house can bring a miracle to your house, or what you have in your house can hinder a miracle in your house. Right. See, you need to ask yourself, what am I putting in my house? What am I filling up my house with? It's is it the things of the world or is it the Holy Spirit? See, when trouble hits your life, it's going to, it's going to matter what you've been putting in your house as to how you're going to come out of that situation. That's why you see some people. The smallest little thing can just tear their life apart. I mean, just, I mean, just, I mean, just completely. I mean, just the whole world's coming to an end over the smallest little situation. It's because they ain't got no oil in their house. They ain't got no oil in their house. Let me put it this way: they ain't got no supernatural intervention of God in their house. They ain't got no miracle power, uh, uh, power of God in their house. They ain't got no Holy Spirit in their house. The only thing they've been putting in their house is what satisfies their flesh. And God says, you've got to put some oil in the house. The prophet asked the widow woman, what do you, got, what do you have in your house? She said, all I got is a pot of oil. And Elisha said to her, that's all you need. Listen to me this morning. See, she had been spending her time with God, and she made sure that she had some oil in her house. She knew that if everything else fell apart, she had the most important thing to keep her from being completely destroyed. <coughs> And that was the Holy Spirit. See, God is looking for some empty vessels this morning. God is looking for somebody who's ready to surrender this morning. 
God's, God, God's looking for somebody who's ready to give it all to Him this morning. See, if you would give God an empty vessel this morning, notice the oil ain't the problem. The oil is there. The oil is available. It's not about the oil. It's about the vessel. It's about what's in your vessel this morning. What are you allowed to be filled up in your vessel this morning? Listen, if you want a miracle, the prophet told the woman, go get something God can pour something into. And the woman helped God in her miracle. Praise God. Hallelujah. The woman helped God in her miracle. You can help yourself in your miracle. The woman determined the magnitude of her miracle, not God. I said the woman determined the magnitude of her miracle. It wasn't God who determined the miracle that she got in her life. It was the woman. It was her. It, it was the question of, is she willing to empty herself? Is she willing to come to God as an empty vessel? Is she willing to give away everything so she can serve God? That determined the magnitude of her miracle. What kind of miracle are you looking for this morning? Well, you know, the way you live, the way you come to God, the way you serve God is going to determine the magnitude of the miracle that you get in your life. Wow. See, so he, said, he said go to everyone and get empty vessels and bring them into the house. He was saying, ever have any ever have what you empty yourself? Ever have what you willing to get rid of things that I don't want in your life? Ever have what, ever have what you willing to, to surrender to me? Yes. It's going to determine how many miracles can flow in your life. Yes. Yes. Because you've got to understand, heaven has an endless supply of miracles. Endless. Endless. Yes. Man, endless. Man. Heaven has an endless supply of miracles. The only issue is, can he find a vessel to pour the oil into? 2015, folks. Listen, this is a new year. We're going to empty the vessels this year. We're going to empty the vessels so God can pour into us this year. The prophet then told her, once she got these empty vessels, go in the room and shut the door. Hallelujah. See, when God is looking for a vessel that he is going to pour his anointing into, that he is going to pour his power into, that he is going to pour his purpose into, that he is going to pour his uh, uh, plan into, it requires separation. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. It says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. See, you can't spend your whole life making sure everyone around you is happy. Wow. Oh, well, you know, if I don't do this for them, you know, they're going to be, oh, you know, you know, you know, I got to make sure they have. No, no. You, they, 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 God told the widow woman to get the vessels full and go in and sh with her sons and shut the door. Listen to me. To be powerful with God, you have to separate yourself from people that refuse to empty themselves. Amen. You want to hang around people who refuse to empty themselves. Amen. You're ready to empty yourself, but you're still hanging around people who refuse to empty themselves. See, you're hanging around vessels that are full of the world, and God is saying, hallelujah, you need to get around some other empty vessels and let him pour his oil in them. Let him pour his Holy Spirit into you. And uh, listen, he's saying as long as you consistently empty your vessel, he said, I'm consistently going to pour oil into it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, but how many of us is willing to surrender all to God? How many of us is willing to surrender everything we got to God? Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The prophet then, oh, he said, he said, you go in there and you shut the door. Listen, folks, in order to serve God, in order to be powerful for God, it requires saying no to some people. It requires saying no to some things. See, if we will separate ourselves from certain relationships that we know that are not of God, that's when he can that's when the oil is going to keep on flowing. But as long as we will separate ourselves from people that we know that, 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 that want to serve God with a full heart, as long as we want to please everybody, as long as we want everybody to like us, listen, God can't pour his, the oil is going to stop. God can't pour his oil in you. He said, you shut the door. Hallelujah. In other words, he said, you shut the door. Go get your sons and shut the door. And I'm telling you this morning to shut the door, tell God I'm your vessel, and then tell God now to give me some more. Amen. You say, well, how, how am I going to talk to God like that? Just like I just said. But you've got to shut the door. You've got to cut some people out your life. You've got to cut some things out your life. 
you got to cut, cut some addictions at your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, as long as you're entertaining the world, you've yet to separate yourself, and you still want the best of both worlds. And when God starts to, hallelujah, to pour His oil in you, there's not enough room for you to be filled with His oil. Because, see, you refuse to empty yourself with your fleshly desires. You want, you still want your fleshly desires, but yet you still want God to serve. You still want God to pour His blessings out on you. Listen, I was thinking about how the oil stopped, and there was no place to put the oil. They ran out of vessels. The Bible says that the oil stopped, but as long as there was a vessel, the oil kept flowing. Right. Listen to me. Listen to me, church. As long as you're willing to completely come to God, even though you still got issues in your life, even though you still got things going on in your life, but you're willing to come to God and bow His feet and say, God, I surrender these things to you. And, and, and they may not even go away at the moment. They may go away at the moment. But as long as you surrender them to Him every day, He is going to keep pouring the oil in you. But the minute you stop saying, well, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to do that, the oil is going to stop. See, you, see, when you keep yourself in a surrendered state, see, the oil's going to keep on flowing. But when you still want to hold on to that thing God told you to get rid of, see, the oil is going to stop and your power will always be limited. See, you can, never, you can never get completely full of God because you won't let go of the thing God wants you to get rid of in your life. Think about this right here. This is just an example. You go to the grocery store, and you go down each aisle, you get you a gallon of milk, you get you a turkey, you get you some canned goods, you get you some fruit, you get you some, so just whatever you need for your household, and you get to the checkout line, but there ain't no bags to put the groceries in. Listen to what I'm saying this morning. It seems like an insignificant thing, but if you don't have anything to put the product in, you're going to be spilling all your groceries all over the parking lot. This is what I'm saying. Praise God. See, there has to be an empty vessel. There has to be an empty bag to put the items in. If not, it's going to be impossible to get all your groceries to the car. Listen to me. But if you have some vessels to put them in, then it's going to be a simple task to get your groceries that, that, that out of your car. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying this morning. If you've got an empty vessel for the Holy Spirit to, to flow into, it's going to be simple for you to Heal your marriage. It's going to be simple for you to take care of your children. It's going to be simple for you to do whatever you need to do. It's going to be simple, but if you ain't got an empty vessel, if you ain't willing to empty yourself, guess what? The oil stops. And you're going to be dealing with that issue the rest of your life. It's simple, folks. People say, people say, I want some hot coffee. Well, you know what? I can get some hot coffee. And I can throw it on you. Do you want some hot coffee or do you want a cup of hot coffee? A cup of hot coffee. Listen to what I'm saying. If you don't have something to put it in, then the product goes to waste. All right, back. Let's do stuff. Can you imagine, praise God, can you imagine ordering a pizza and the delivery guy showing up, you hear the doorbell ring, you go out there and get the pizza, but he's standing there holding the pizza and it don't got no box. He's got the pizza in his hand. The cheese is oozing all over it, all down his arm. The cheese is oozing all over the ground. It's falling down everywhere. You don't know where his hand's been. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Listen, the first question you're going to ask that pizza guy, where's the box? I was expecting the product to come in the box. I was expecting the product to come in the vessel. Praise God. All right, Pastor. Hallelujah. Praise God. Y'all stay with me. Praise God. You've got to understand the box is only worth 39 cents. The box don't really mean that much. Okay. The box ain't really worth a whole lot. Uh -huh. Listen to me. But when you've got the product to put in the box, right. it brings value to it. Yeah. Listen to what I'm saying. Other words, yeah. God. Yeah. glory to God, hallelujah. Glory. Listen to what I'm saying. See, see, we'll see, see, the box don't give value to the product, but the product gives value to the box. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't, hey, you don't give product to, you don't give value to the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit gives value to you. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. See, see, we're just a vessel. 
and Christ is in us. It says in 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, Know ye not that you're the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Listen to what I'm saying. When God wants to use you, when God calls you to do something in the ministry, when God calls you out to do something, you shouldn't get all puffed up because you're just a 39 cent box. That's all you are. You're just a 39 cent box. I know you think you all that. I know you think you got a bag of chips and a, and a fat soda and everything else, but you ain't nothing but a 39 cent box. That's all you are. But when you put Christ in you, oh, shut that up. Oh. See. But when you put Christ in you, you become more than just a 39 cent box. What I'm trying to tell you is you don't have to be great this morning. You don't have to be super good looking this morning. You don't have to be talented this morning. But you do have to be clean and you do have to be empty. Yes. 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 Glory to God. What I'm trying to tell you, praise God. God says, if you would give me a vessel, I will give you a miracle. He said, if you give me a vessel, I'll give you some of my oil. He said, if, I'll give you, if you give me a vessel, he said, I'll, give, I'll show you your will for your life. If you give me a vessel, I'll show you what your purpose is for my life. Listen, all that God needs out of a 39 cent box is it for it to be clean and empty. Come on, yes. 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 <laughs> Glory to God. See, Satan hates your body. Satan hates the box. Yes. Jeez, right. See, he knows the power of the oil. Yes. Praise God. Hey, it was the oil that kicked him out of heaven. It was the oil that cast him out. Right. It was right. the oil that defeated him. He knows he's no match for the oil, so his only hope is to mess up the vessel. His only hope is to mess up the box. His only hope is to mess up the 39 cent box that God wants to pour the oil into. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. See, that's why it matters how you live. That, that's why it matters if you're going out here getting high every day. That's why it matters if you're out here getting drunk on the weekends. That's why it matters if you're sleeping with your boyfriend or girlfriend. That's why it matters how you live your life. You're either a container of trash or you're a container of treasure. It's not the oil's problem. It ain't the problem of the oil. The problem is the vessel. All right, all right. And God is looking for a vessel that he can pour his miracles into, that he can pour his power into, that he can pour his Holy Ghost into. But the vessel has to be clean. And the vessel has to be empty. Glory to God. See, my testimony is, I'm not qualified to be up here. Let me tell you something right now. I, I, I'm not comfortable with doing what I do. I never feel like I got this. If you don't believe me, you ask my wife. I shut that up. I see that up. You ask my wife every Sunday morning before I leave the house, every Saturday night before I go to bed. I said, baby, pray for me because I don't know. I don't know. I, I just don't got this. I'm not qualified to do this. I'm not worthy to do this. I never feel like that, 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 that you know, okay, I, it's Sunday. I'm just going to get up here and preach. I'm just going to get up here and give people a message. It don't work like that. I'm not qualified to do this. But when I come to God as a clean and an empty vessel and let him pour his oil into me, it qualifies me to preach his word. Glory yeah. to God. Hallelujah. woo yeah, well, See, God is, God is looking for somebody to use this morning. And see, he found this vessel right here. But listen, don't praise the box. Praise what's in the box. Yes, yes, Lord. Don't praise the pastor. Praise the Holy Ghost that's in the pastor. See, he deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. And he deserves the praise. See, he wants to use you. Praise God this morning. He will dream through you. He will preach through you. He will cause miracles to happen through you if you will be a vessel. Mm -hmm. See, I wasn't no preacher, but what I learned, God don't need no superstars. He just needs somebody that will say, God, here's my body. Here's your temple. Use me. Yeah. He just needs somebody that will say, I, I, here I am, and I'm willing to empty myself so you can pour your oil inside of me. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, 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 if it, if it costs you something, get rid of it. This is what I'm saying. Nothing that the world has to offer is worth what God has to give you. 
If that friend is making fun of you for praising God, if that co-worker is making fun of you for serving God, if that family member is putting you down for serving God, and if i got to choose, they got to go. they got to go. i got to separate myself from them because they're not willing to empty their vessel. Amen. See, I'm his vessel, and this is what, and, 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 and this is what life is about this morning. Jesus is in you, the hope of glory brings meaning. Jesus in you, the hope of glory brings purpose to life. Nothing else will ever satisfy you. See, it, it, it's not you and yourself is that's clean enough, but it's Jesus making you clean enough. See, Satan knows that if he don't do something to destroy the box, then the power of God cannot be stopped. So he's out to destroy the box. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all bear with me for a minute. I got a little example here. Look. I got a little prop here. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all got the same box. Everybody in here has got the same box. But see, if we're so busy loading our box up with different things, of the world, if we're so busy, and these ain't porn magazines, by the way, I'm just using these magazines. Amen. If we're so busy spending our time looking at porn, if we're so busy being bitter at everybody, if we're so busy gossiping about everybody, if we're so busy putting everybody down, if we're so busy walking around with a resentful attitude, if we so busy this morning, being, uh, uh, being, full, uh, uh, being full of discord this morning, listen, if we so busy uh, filling our vessels up with, 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 with beer cans, these ain't beer cans, with beer cans, uh, uh, drinking beer, satisfying our flesh, if we so busy, praise God, praise God, if we so, if we so busy filling our vessel up with stuff that, 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 that don't belong in our life, a little lost something, praise God. I got the final. Man. I, if we so busy, oh, praise God, I found If we so busy filling our vessel up with reefer, yeah. listen to me. If we so busy, praise God, filling our body up with drugs, Listen to what I'm saying this morning. If we so busy filling ourselves up, if we refuse to empty ourselves, our flesh desires, guess what? The box can't close. Now guess what? It's always going to be a discord. Guess what? You can't even carry the box out to the car without spilling everything out of it. But when you empty that vessel, and you bring that vessel clean before the Lord, and you allow Him to pour the oil, into your vessel. You allow him to pour oil into your vessel. You can, you can close the box and you can carry it around without spilling anything and you've got an answer for everything that comes up in your life. You've got an answer for everything that shows up in your life. Why? Because, see, you, you, said, you said, God, I'm your vessel and I'm willing to empty myself of all the stuff that the world has filled me up with. I'm willing to get rid of all that stuff. And now I'm, real, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for you to pour the oil in me, Jesus. I'm your vessel this morning. Pour your oil in me and fill me, Jesus. Amen. Listen, this is when you, hallelujah, this is when the oil keeps on flowing. What a lot of people do, praise God. Praise, praise, what a lot of people do, they live it like this, they come to church, and they, and they try to put a little Sunday morning on there, and the box is still a mess. The box is still falling out everywhere. Matter of fact, when they need the answer, oh, there, went, there went the answer. There went the answer right there. Listen to what I'm saying. See, they think, see, people think you can live any way you want to live and still put the Bible to it, still come to church, and your life is going to get better. Your life ain't no, going to get better until you empty the vessel. Until you empty the vessel and allow God to pour His oil in the vessel. And once He pours His oil in the vessel, it says as long as you keep the vessel clean, He will keep pouring the oil. But the minute you don't keep the vessel clean, the minute you allow a little porn to come in there, guess what? The oil stops. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, are you willing to empty your vessel this morning? Are you willing to empty yourself this morning? Are you really willing to surrender to Christ this morning? Listen, God's looking for him. He, he don't care nothing about you. He really does care about you. Your 39 cent box. But he wants to know when you come to him clean and empty this morning. Amen. He wants to know, are you ready for his oil to pour out in your life this morning? Are you ready for him to cleanse you this morning? See, he says you've got to be an empty vessel this morning. Praise God. And there's so much more to this message. Praise God. You've got to be an empty vessel this morning. And when you empty yourself and come to him clean, even though you're just a 39 cent box, once he puts the product in that thing, you become Jesus Christ. You become Jesus Christ. Yes. You become anything you need in your life. Anything and everything you need in your life, you got it. Why? Because he freely gives us all things. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I didn't mean to make such a mess. Praise God. But listen, folks. We have got to come to a place in our life where we're willing to empty ourselves and completely surrender to God this morning. See, Satan knows that if he don't destroy the box, then the, then, the, uh, the, then the power of God cannot be stopped. But if he can cause the box to be screwed up, if he can foul the box up, guess what? He can stop the oil. See, the devil's scared of the oil. Satan's scared of the oil. Or the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. Satan's scared of the Holy Spirit because he knows the Holy Spirit don't whoop his butt one time, and he knows is it the Holy Spirit's gonna whoop his butt? Hey, what you can pray, God. Yes. I got something the Lord just give me. I'm just gonna share this. I'm gonna close. When Jesus was in the tomb, notice he didn't buy the tomb; he borrowed the tomb. He borrowed the tomb because he knew he just needed it for three days, but he bought you. Yeah. 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 But he bought you with his blood, praise God. See, holy, praise God, glory to God. See, listen to me. How oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He went down to hell to when his body laid in that grave for three days. He went down to hell and took the keys to death, hell, and the grave and brought them back and gave them to us, to anybody who will eat them. Empty and clean and bring yourself as a clean vessel. Yeah. Satan ain't even got the keys to his own house. Yeah. I got it. Right. Y'all got it. Right. Amen. Yeah. Listen to me. Yeah. Just remember one thing. Why would Jesus buy a tomb if he knew he only needed it for three days? Right. Right. But see, he knew he needed you for eternity. Yeah. Yeah. He borrowed the tomb, but he bought you. Amen. 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 Y'all come on. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. 